Ladies and gentlemen, the guest producer of the Lux Radio Theater, Mr. Edward G. Robinson. Before we open the Lux Radio Theater program, we think it only fitting and proper that we pause for a moment of tribute to the memory of a great American. Since last Monday night, our country has suffered an overwhelming loss. Only history can write a full and adequate tribute to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And now it is for all of us to unite solidly and loyally to finish the great task remaining before us, both in winning the war and in winning the peace. chaotic and fast-changing world, we may forget that only yesterday we were living through one of the most hectic periods in American history, the flaming 20s, a decade of nervous change and violent speed, of prohibition, gangsterism, and Wall Street hysteria. That is the setting of our play tonight, universal screen hit, only yesterday, the story of a man's life and a woman's love against the background of a world recovering from the shock of war. Starring in tonight's production is the talented, dramatic actress Ida Lupino, who turns out to be a great light comedian in the Warner Brothers picture, Pillow to Post. Co-starred with Miss Lupino is the personable Robert Young. In Leisure Hours, a gentleman rancher from the San Fernando Valley who comes to our stage from Etta Goldman Mayer Studios, producers of the Catherine Hepburn Spencer Tracy comedy, Without Love. Among so many other changes... It was only yesterday that women first asserted their emancipation. They'd won the vote, and they went on to claim equality and freedom. Equality in business, art, and science. Freedom from needless drudgery at home. In greater numbers, they turned to labor-saving methods and conveniences. Lux flakes, for instance, that have saved so many women countless hours of labor over scrubbing boards and wash tubs, and have helped to keep things looking fresher into the bargain. And just as in the last war, Lux Flakes held precious clothing to wear longer, so they're performing the same service in America today. Our players are standing in the wings now, and it's curtain time for the first act of Only Yesterday, starring Robert Young as James Emerson and Ida Lupino as Mary Lane. October 1929. Stock market crash. In a panic of selling that sweeps the country, the business world of America comes crashing down with a roar heard in a million factories and shops, in 30 million homes. Within a few short hours, huge fortunes and meager savings alike have vanished into thin air. Men struggle to explain, struggle vainly against the financial monster that has turned to destroy them and then sit back crushed amid the wreckage of all their hopes and dreams. But far uptown from Wall Street, in the sunlit bedroom of a pleasant home, another battle is being fought, a battle between life and death. By a bedside, the doctor keeps careful watch as a young woman sinks lower and lower into the darkness. At last, her eyes open. A white hand plucks nervously at the coverlet. Doctor. Yes? Doctor... Do you think I, I can hold out until he gets here? Why, of course. Your boy's on his way here now. Mary, Jimmy left the school at 8 o'clock this morning. They're bringing him just as fast as they can. Yes, I may beat them to it. Oh, Mary, please don't. Julia. Yes, dear? You'll find a letter there. A letter I wrote. Mary. Yes, to him. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm very sure, Julia. I've had a long time to think about it lying here. You see, everything's so clear to me now. And I want it to be like that for him, too. But will it help? Will it do any good now? I think it will. He has a right to know, and so has Jimmy. I just couldn't tell him while I lived. That's why, when I found out I hadn't long, 
I was almost glad. Oh, Mary. Julia. Julia, I want you to promise me. See that he gets the letter after I'm gone. You will, won't you? Yes, I promise. Thank you. Oh, it is that Jimmy. Well, I'll go and see. I'll bring him right in if it is. Jimmy? Oh, Jimmy, darling. Come here, dear. Well, what's the matter, Aunt Julia? They told me to come home from school right away, but they wouldn't tell me why. Well, Mother is sick, Jimmy, and she wants to see you. Can I go in now? Wait. You see, dear, you've got to be awfully brave because she's very, very sick. Aunt Julia, is she... Is Mother gonna die? Oh, Jimmy. Oh, my darling. Come in, dear. Mother? Hello, Jimmy. Come here, darling. Oh, my, you're getting big. You'll be a man soon, won't you? Jimmy, don't cry. Look, darling. There are hard things we all have to face in life. They aren't so bad as some people make them out. Cowardly people. Not getting very sick. Even dying. Isn't so terrible, really. It, it just means getting along without each other. For a little longer time than... Well, going away to school or things like that. And so, darling, I have to go away for quite a long time. And I want you to be as good a boy when you were big. As you've been to me when you were little. Darling, you will, won't you? Oh, Mother. Oh, Gio. ma'am? Yes. Yes, I want you to take this letter. 114 Wall Street. Do it quickly, it's important. And deliver it personally to Mr. James Emerson. 114 Wall, yes, ma'am. Hello, listen, I've got to speak to him. Put him on the phone. Wait a minute. Fairchild, close that door. Yes, sir. Now, listen, this is James Emerson speaking. Tell Mr. Brand I've got to speak to him. But he can't close me out. I've got to have a chance. I... Hello. Hello. Mr. Emerson. Yes? I've never seen anything like it, sir. You never will again. I'm going to let you in on something, Fairchild. You better go get yourself another job, if you can find one. Mr. Emerson, you didn't lose everything. It's impossible, sir. Yes? Speak to Brand sometime. He's through, too. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. Well, get out, will you? Yes, sir. Oh, your wife called, sir. She wanted to know when you'd be home. She's having a few people in this evening. <laughs> well, it's a good time for a party. She didn't happen to mention who was going to pay for it, did she? All right, get out. Tell her I'll, I'll be a little late. Hello? Hello? I'm sorry, sir, I can't hear you. No, sir, Mr. Emerson is not home yet. Very good, sir. Husband. No, ma'am. Someone calling him, ma'am. Well, did you hear from his office? Only that he'd be home later, Mrs. Emerson. Then a messenger came with this letter. He said he'd tried to reach Mr. Emerson at the office, and he wasn't there. Well, call the office again. Tell him... To... Oh, never mind. He's here. Jim, for heaven's sake, what happened to you? I've been trying to reach you all day. Shall I take your coat, sir? Uh, oh, uh, uh, thanks. Well, where's Harry Adams? I thought he was coming with you. Eunice has been waiting for him. Is, uh... Eunice still here? Of course. Well, you'd better send her home. Harry Adams is dead. Jim! Jumped out of the window an hour ago. Oh, no! Jim, what's happened down there? What is it? Send somebody home with Eunice. Then you'd better come and see me in the study. We've got a lot to talk over. I'll wait for you. <laughs> Believe it, Jim. Why didn't you tell me before? I didn't know before. But how could it happen? This morning we were rich. That was ten hours ago. Now you try to tell me we have nothing. What about the country house, this apartment? Gone. And all those bonds? They're gone, too. Everything. Blanche, I haven't got a nickel. I see. 
I suppose that means I haven't anything either. I didn't say that. But I suppose you'd like me to give up whatever I have that's worth anything. My pearls, the bracelet. No. I think you'd better keep them. They're paid for. Well, I intend to keep them, Jim. It's the only thing I can keep out of this mess. I'm not going to give up everything and start living in a furnished room. It may be very noble, but it's hardly practical. Not for me. You were warned about the market. Norman Harris warned you. He told me himself. But you wouldn't listen. No, no. You knew everything. It uh, seems I was mistaken. When are you divorcing me, Blanche? What? When are you divorcing me to marry Norman Harris? He wanted to for a long time. There's nothing now to hold you back. You're horrible. No woman could live with you. You deserve anything you get. Anything! <sighs> well, go on. Why don't you do it? What's the use of fighting when you've got nothing to fight for? Go on. Adam's had the nerve. Get out of it. Leave it all behind. It's only a second. One quick drop. Down. Down. And it's all over. Go on. Go on. Mr. Emerson. Mr. Emerson. Well, uh... Uh, what is it? Oh, sir, uh, the window, I thought. I was trying to fix the drapes. What do you want? This this letter, sir. It came by messenger. He said it was important. All right, get out, please. Yes, sir. Mr. James Emerson, personal. Urgent. <laughs> My dearest Jim, I have so much to tell you and so little time in which to say it. You may have to think back 12 years ago to recall, if you can, a girl you met for the first time at a dance at the Virginia Country Club in April 1917. Her name was... 12 years ago, to recall, if you can, a girl you met for the first time at a dance at the Virginia Country Club in April 1917. Her name was Mary Lane. Do you remember now? You were Lieutenant Emerson, then. Eh? And so very, very handsome in your uniform. I remember seeing you come in the door. You stood there smiling. All of the girls had a little card with a soldier's name on it. We were supposed to dance with that soldier and entertain him. Your name wasn't on my card, but I went over and spoke to you anyway. Oh, good evening. Aren't you Lieutenant James Stanton Emerson? Oh, yes, I guess I am. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to look after you. Shall we dance? I don't know why not. Come on. Uh, is uh, this something new? Well, we thought it'd be nice to try and keep the boys in the camp down here from getting homesick. And with great success, too. <laughs> Will you be going over soon? Can't tell. I hope so. You're quite anxious, aren't you? I suppose so. But I'm glad I didn't go before. Why? Why? Because if I had, I would have missed the chance to meet you. Oh, please. It's so loud. Why? What have I done? Well, listen, I have a confession to make to you. Yeah? Uh, what name is on your card, the one they gave you at the door? Well, let's see. It's, uh, Miss Amy Breckenridge. Oh, yes. Well, that isn't my name. No? No. My name is Mary Lane. Amy drew you, but I traded with her, my captain, for you. Oh, you did? I'm afraid you haven't the proper respect for rank. Uh, why did you do it? Because I wanted to be with you. Did you tell her that? Oh, well, she and Deborah, that's my other friend. Mm -hmm. They think you and I know each other very well. Now, what gave them that idea? I did. What? Oh, don't be angry. Please don't. Oh, I'm not angry. <laughs> but I am a little surprised. And that isn't all. I wore some flowers last weekend, and I told them they came from you. No. Well, uh, how long has this been going on? Two years. Oh, I've been sending you flowers for two years, huh? Oh, no, no. I mean, it's two years since we met. Say, uh, let's go out on the porch and start from the beginning, huh? Come on. Now, let's see. You, uh, say we have met. Well, you couldn't exactly call it that. Well, uh, where was it? An affair that Mrs. Abbott gave two years ago. Mm -hmm. I was 17 then, so of course you didn't notice me. I gave you a cheese sandwich. Well, that was nice of you. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen you since. Where? When you were campaigning for President Wilson. Oh. My aunt, who lives in New York, was staying with us. She's a suffragette. You know, thinks women ought to vote, and mm -hmm. I went with her. 
And you made a speech. No. Oh, yes, you did. It, it was a wonderful speech. You were so sincere and handsome. <laughs> I tried to buy a picture of you, but they only had President Wilson and Vice President Marshall. And you'd rather have had me? Oh, yes, of course. Miss Lane, I love you. Oh. What's the matter? You kissed me. And I asked, what's the matter? Well, it was a kind of a surprise attack. <laughs> you can't say you haven't known me long enough. Two years? Two years are surely good for one kiss. Especially such a gentle kiss. Uh, well, I think we'd better go back inside. Do you really want to? No. Then let's walk. Let's walk way out there. All right. Shall I show you our golf course? That's a good idea. We'll walk the full course. Oh, well, it takes two hours to go around. I think a little of the golf course will go quite away tonight. Well, I may need more time than that, though. Time? Yeah, to catch up. I've got to get as well acquainted with you as you are with me. Oh, I see. Well, let's begin. I'm 19 now. Oh, but I told you that. And I live over there, see? Oh, a lovely old place. It looks better at night. And uh, what's your favorite flower? Violets. Hmm. Who's your favorite moving picture actress? Blanche Sweet. Now, see, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> yes, aren't we? <laughs> now, just one more. A really personal one. Are you uh, engaged or something? Oh, no. Why not? Uh, well, uh, uh, that's too personal. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad you're not. Just think of it. A beautiful old garden, Virginia Moonlight, and us three. Three? You and me and fate. Three of us walking in the garden. Eden was never like this, Mary Lane. No, I... I guess it couldn't have been. I, I guess that... What? Well, I guess we'd better go back. We went back that night. But there were other times when we didn't. Do you remember how we used to meet? Whenever and wherever we could. All those beautiful short days and shorter nights until I learned to love you so that I couldn't live out of your sight. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't mine. What had happened was something beyond either of us. And then one night, we'd been out for hours, walking and not saying very much, and you left me in the garden. Good night, my darling. Oh, no, Jim. Not yet. Please don't go yet. I don't want to, ever. You know that. Yes, I know. I've got to get used to it. You're leaving me. Because someday... Oh, darling, I can't bear it. This is just goodbye for a few hours, but soon it'll be... Mary. Oh, don't cry. Please. I do try, Jim. I try so awfully hard. When can I see you again? Well, I'm trying to get leave for next Saturday. Perhaps I'll get the whole weekend. If I do, would you marry me? Oh, Jim. Oh, no. No, we can't. Why not? Well, there's my family. They... They don't even know you. You do, Mary. Oh, yes, I do. I do. Then we'll get married. No one has to know about it. We'll keep it a secret. Just till I get back. I... I think it would be right, Mary. Oh, Jim. My sweet. If you only knew how happy you'd made me that night. How the days seemed to drag by until Saturday... But it came finally, and we were married. Oh, it was a lovely secret, darling. The loveliest I've ever tried to keep. But of course, I couldn't. I told my mother and father one day at breakfast. I think they were a little angry, but I was so happy I didn't care. And just when are we going to meet this paragon of yours, Mary? As soon as he has his next leave. Oh, dear. Why, I can't even remember his name. What did you say it was? James Emerson, Mother. Lieutenant Emerson. 309th Infantry. And he's very tall, very dark, and very, very nice. Yes, I'm sure he must be. Now, Dad, please. Just because it all seems so sudden to you, don't try to judge him until you've seen him. You'll like him. I know you will. Miss Mary. Yes, Abby. Your friend Miss Deborah's here. Mary. Come in, Deborah. Oh, Mary. Mary, darling. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Lane. Good morning, Mr. Lane. Morning, Deborah. Sit down and have some breakfast, dear. Oh, no, no, thank you, Mrs. Lane. I'm too excited to eat. Haven't you heard the news? What news? The men at the camp are leaving. Leaving? Yes. The orders came from Washington all of a sudden. Mary. Oh, I've got to go down there. I've got to go to the train. Excuse me. Mary, dear. Please. Please. Oh, please let me through. I've got to get to the train. Please. 
please let me through. I'm sorry, miss. That's as far as you can go. Where's the 309th infantry, please? What? The 309th. Oh, that's gone, miss. The 309th left an hour ago. Oh, thank you. Thank you. G. Robinson and our stars Ida Lupino and Robert Young will return for Act Two of Only Yesterday in just a moment. And now, here's Libby Collins, our fashion reporter. Reporting on figures, Mr. Kennedy, because they're so important to the new fashions. There's no use in trying on the new styles this spring unless you have the right foundation to set them off. But that's easier said than done. Most women would give their eye teeth for one of those wonderful figure-molding pre-war all-elastic jobs. But they just don't exist. However, cutting has become an art. And now that some synthetic rubber is available, with a little patience, you can find what you need. But those snippets of elastic you find in the new garments are very, very precious. So take good care of every girdle. Lots of women ask whether synthetic rubber should be washed the same way as natural rubber. The answer is emphatically yes. In fact, you'll find the new girdles fit better when they're washed often. After two or three days, a girdle gets stretched and doesn't control as well as when it's freshly luxed and firm. Luxing helps to restore the original fit. And please, if you value a good girdle, don't use harsh wash day methods. Strong soap weakens elasticity. It's been proved by actual tests that girdles washed the luxe way keep their elasticity longer. So do be kind to those girdles of yours. The ones you have now, the new ones you buy. Lux them gently, and lux them often. It's thrifty figure insurance. Now, Edward G. Robinson returns with our stars. Act two of Only Yesterday, starring Ida Lupino as Mary Lane and Robert Young as James Emerson. In his study, James Emerson sits at the desk. Before him is a letter. A letter that takes him back 12 years, back to the day he sailed for France, back to a girl named Mary Lane. His hands tremble slightly as he turns the page. So we miss saying our last goodbye. But I said it to you anyway, over and over to myself on the way home from the station. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, darling. Come home safe. I wonder how many times I said that in the next few months. At night, lying awake, or in the day, walking through the fields where we had walked. And then, all at once, I knew. Suddenly, as if I'd been lifted to a great height and could see all the secrets of the world in life, I knew about the baby. I wasn't afraid. Even though you were so far away, I was happy. That's what made it so difficult with Mother. She just couldn't understand This is the first time, the only time anything's happened in our family to make us feel ashamed. Ashamed of what, Mother? I love Jim, and he loves me, and when he comes back... When he comes back? What if he doesn't come back? What then? Mother, please, don't say those things. What am I supposed to tell people? That my daughter was married secretly? Do you think they'd believe me? I don't care whether they do or not. Tell them anything you want. Oh, Mother, I'm sorry that it had to be this way for your sake and Dad's. That's why I'm going up to New York. Yes, I... I suppose that's best. I've written to your Aunt Julia. She's expecting you. Well, thank you, Mother. I'll leave in a few days. That's right. Oh, carry up those bags, will you? Come on, Mary. Well, here we are, Mary. Four rooms and a bath. Otherwise, home. I think it's lovely, Aunt Julia. Well, it's what we call home in New York. But make no mistake, honey. Air shafts and elevators notwithstanding, New York is the place to live. It's in the air. It's electric. It's... Anyhow, you're going to like it. Do you hear me? Like it. You don't have to threaten me. I think I will. That's the girl. Here, give me a hat. Hmm. 
I just can't wait to see you bobbed. Bobbed? You mean cut my hair? Oh, child, women have cut more than their hair. That's just a kind of symbol. They've cut a lot of the old silly nonsense. They can get and hold good jobs nowadays. They aren't dependents anymore. And they've kicked the bottom out of that old bucket about woman's place is at the kitchen sink. <laughs> well, at least you have, Aunt Julia. Now, you sit right there. We'll have tea in a minute. And I'll stop talking long enough to let you tell me a little more about what your mother wrote. Oh, yes. Aunt Julia, are you terribly disappointed in me? Of course I'm not. Why should I be? From all I've heard, you're going to be very happy someday. You and your Jim Emerson. Oh, Aunt Julia, you make it so easy. I think I should have come up here before. Of course you should. Now tell me, does he know about the baby? No. No, I couldn't tell him. I didn't want him to have that to think about. It's hard enough for him now without worrying about me. I know, but you mustn't worry either. Understand? I try not to. But, oh, Aunt Julia, if I only knew, if I were only sure that he was safe, that he'd come back to me alive. He will, darling. Well, he'll probably be here before the baby's born. Oh, uh, by the way, how much time has he got? Well, he better come home soon. It's in November. November 1918. I wonder what the horoscopes would have to say about that one. Nurse! Oh, nurse! Yes? My name is Julia Warren. The, the hospital called me. They told me to come here right away. Oh, of course. Your niece is doing very well, Mrs. Warren. It's a boy. A boy? Oh, how wonderful. May I see her now? I think so. But don't stay too long. No, I won't. Thank you. Hello, darling. Aunt Julia. How are you? I'm all right. Did they, did they tell you? Oh, yes, darling. A boy. I knew it would be. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I can't stay very long, darling, but I have some good news, too. Listen. Do you hear anything? Yes. What is it? Sounds like a celebration. Oh, it is, dear. I didn't know my baby's birthday was that important. <laughs> you hit on a great day for it, honey. Listen while I say it slowly. The armistice has been signed. Really signed. People are crazy with the news. The war is over, Mary. Over? Oh, now his father can come home. Yes, dear. Oh, I must get well fast, very fast. I've got to meet him when he comes back. Well, they, they can't all come on the first ship, you know. Good morning. Would you like to see your baby now? Oh, yes, nurse. Here you are, dear. Thank you. Look, Aunt Julia. Just look at him. Oh. He, he looks just like his father, doesn't he? Mm hmm. All but the uniform. <laughs> How long will it be, I wonder, before he can get back to us? Oh, uh, a month or two or three. A month or two or three. I thought they'd never pass, Jim. And then your regiment came home. I was on the pier waiting. I'd been there since seven that morning. And then at last I saw you. How I got through that crowd, I'll never know. Jim, darling. Hello. Oh, my darling. I, I'm so glad to have you back again. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, Jim, is that all we have to say to each other? I'm sorry. I, uh, please excuse me. Jim. There he is, Jim Boy, here. Oh, hello, Father. Oh, my boy. Father, dear. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you again. Good morning, hero. Oh, Oh, Blanche. Oh. Oh, oh, boy, what's the matter? It's Blanche, my boy. Yes, of course. <laughs> Have I changed that much, darling? Come along, oh, no. The whole family's waiting at the house. Now I want to hear all about everything. Oh, Jim, my darling. Jim. Oh, Jim. Why, Mary, what is it? What happened? Didn't you see him? Yes. Yes, I saw him. But, 
He didn't know me. He didn't. Oh, darling, what on earth are you doing? I ran up to him. He looked at me. Spoke to me. I didn't know who I was. Oh, Mary, you can't think that he didn't want to know you. Not if all you've told me about him's true. What else is there to think? His people were there and a girl. It's probably very convenient. Oh, now, Mary, listen. You mustn't forget that you've changed, too. Your... Well, your hair is different. Your clothes are different. You look like another girl. It's a compliment to you, Julia. You've done me over with a vengeance. The Julia Warren shop guarantees to make you over so that... The father of your baby won't even know you. Oh, Mary, dear. Oh, Julia. If you had changed a thousand ways, I'd still know him. What are you going to do? I don't know. Well, there are things you can do. You can go to him. Tell him he has a son. Demand your rights as a wife. Demand? No, I have some pride, Julia. It isn't fair to me or to my baby. If I have to demand, I don't want it. But you can't go on this way. Yes, I can. I'll wait. I know he'll come to us. I know it. How long will you wait, Mary? Until he has to recognize me. And he will someday. Julia, will you do something for me? Of course, dear. Will you let me come into your shop with you? Oh, darling, I'd be so glad if you would. Yes, I, I want to go to work. I've got to think about my son's future. Looking back at that time, 11 years ago, I hardly seemed to know myself. I was so very young, so very foolish. For months, my pride wouldn't let me go to you. I kept myself busy in Julia's shop and with the baby. And in time, I had our marriage quietly annulled. But I couldn't understand. I couldn't forget. And then one night, I made my decision. I had to see you. I think Julia must have known, because just as I was leaving the apartment, she stopped me at the door. Mary, where are you going, dear? Dinner's almost ready. Well, I... I'm going out. Where, dear? Julia, I'm going to see Jim. I can't stand this any longer. I'm going to him and tell him everything. What's changed you so suddenly? It isn't sudden, Julia. You know where I was this afternoon? In front of his office waiting for him to come out, hoping he'd see me and remember me. And that wasn't the first time. It hasn't been a day since he came back that I haven't stood outside his office or near his home. Well, I, I'm going to swallow my pride. I'm going to him, tell him that I love him, and that I can't go on without him. Wait a minute. I've got something to show you, Mary. Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, I didn't want to show it to you. But, well, I think you'd better read this. Mr. and Mrs. James Stanton Emerson, who were married on Wednesday last, sailed a day for... Oh, Mary. Mary, darling, please don't look like that. It... Mary! We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Edward G. Robinson and our stars Ida Lupino and Robert Young will be back with Act Three of Only Yesterday in just a moment. It's almost lunchtime in a busy office. Hey, Janie, it's almost one o'clock and I'm starved. Hurry up or we'll have to stand in line for ages. Okay, just let me finish this. There. I suppose you know you've got to run. No, where? Oh, darn. Could you lend me a buck for another pair? All right, but you're always borrowing to buy new stockings. Well, you get it back on payday. Besides, I can't help those runs. I'll bet you could. Remember the last time when we both got stockings? Uh-huh. Well, I've still got mine and no runs. So? Well, don't you remember what I told you about luck cutting down runs? Oh, that. But it's true. We both got our stockings at the same time. Well, mine are still nice and I use luck. 
You rub yours with cake soap and Okay, it's no... stake me to a box of Lux Flakes and I'll try it. Listen, I'm only trying to help you cut down runs. So I'll get the stuff. Let's go get the stockings and the Lux now and eat later. Stockings aren't too plentiful these days, so Luxing is more important than ever. Strain tests have proved that Lux stockings last twice as long as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. Why not let Lux help you get twice the wear from every pair? For best results, always dry rayons at least 24 hours. Now, here's Edward G. Robinson and our stars. After the play, we'll bring our stars to the footlights for a bit of reminiscence. The curtain's going up now on Act Three of Only Yesterday, starring Robert Young as Jim and Ida Lupino as Mary. In Jim Emerson's study, time is forgotten. Poring over the letter from Mary Lane, Emerson's mind tries vainly to pierce the darkness of years long past. The letter goes on. How can I tell you of the ten years that came after? It would be wrong to say I was always unhappy, for there were times when I wasn't. Times when I looked at little Jimmy growing up so straight and strong, and knew that no matter what had happened, you had still given me him. He was, he was ten, ten years, years old last November, November, and I had him entered in a private school. It was strange not having him with me, for somehow he'd taken your place. But then he came home for the holidays, and I was happy again. Mother! Mother! Hello there. Can I come in? In a minute, darling. Let me finish dressing. Okay. Happy New Year, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Aunt Julia. Happy New Year. What's in the package? My new dress. I'm going to be beautiful tonight if it kills me. Where's your mother? Is she getting ready? Mm-hmm. We just got home a little while ago. We went to the doctor's. Oh, what did he say? Nothing much. He gave me a lot of tests and stuff, and... And he said I can play football all I want next year. Oh, that's wonderful, Jimmy. Then you're all right, aren't you? I guess so. But you know what? He told Mother it was her who needed to be careful. What? I heard him. He said something about she was working too hard or something, and she ought to take things easier. What do you suppose that means, Aunt Julia? Well, I don't know. She has been doing too much. I've told her time and time again... But it doesn't do any good. Do you suppose it'd help if she didn't come to the store sometimes? I mean, like take a vacation? Well, yes, if she'd do it. But just try and make her stay away. All right now, Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy, Jimmy, don't tell her you told me, will you? I'll call the doctor myself. I won't tell her. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Oh, gee, you look keen. You're going out, huh? Uh-huh. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. That's good. I just wanted to come in and say Happy New Year, that's all. Mary, that man's here. Oh, dear. Tell him I'll be right there. Jimmy, I've got a rush. Mr. Reynolds is here, and I haven't even finished my makeup yet. Look out, darling. Boy, you don't need makeup. You'll get by without it. You think so? Mm, just the same. I'm not going to take any chances. Say, Mother, I've been wondering. Mm-hmm. What about? Mr. Reynolds, are you going to marry him? Oh, what a question. He hasn't asked me. Go on. No, really. Well, then why don't you ask him? <laughs> well, Jimmy, ladies don't ask gentlemen to marry them. Oh. Well, I can fix that. How'd you like me to ask him for you? Jimmy, what an idea. No, I don't mind. I'll just go and say to him, Now, look here, Mr. Reynolds, I want to know... Jimmy, if you dare to do a thing like that, I... <laughs> oh, you little imp. <laughs> Gee, did you look scared. Come on now, kiss me goodnight. <laughs> Good night, Mother. Have a nice time. I will, darling. And don't forget, we have a date tomorrow. Mary. Coming. You'll have to entertain him for a while. I'm not ready. <laughs> All right. Hello, David. Well, let me look at you. You're very lovely tonight, Mary. Thanks. Must be your flowers. Sit down, David. How's Jimmy? Well, I think he's getting beyond me. He threatened to embarrass us horribly tonight. Oh, is that so? Mm-hmm. He's going to speak to you about your intentions. No. Oh, definitely. Oh, I suppose you told him how many times I've asked you to marry me. No, I didn't think that was quite the thing. Mary. What? How many more times am I going to ask you? Oh, David, you're very sweet. I'm very much in love with you, Mary. <laughs> and I guess I'll always be, no matter how many times you turn me down. But, David, before we could even think about it, there'd be so much I'd have to tell you. But you couldn't find a more interested listener. Go on. No. 
No, it's the wrong time, David. Will there ever be a right time? Yes, I... Well, I'll tell you next year. Next year? It's only about four hours. Oh, that's right. Mary, is that a promise? Yes. It's a promise, David. I don't know exactly what I plan to tell David. I had no fear of the truth because I knew he loved me. But that night, just as the new year was coming in and the crowds were milling through the streets, I met you again. I'd become separated from David and Julia. And then suddenly, there we were, you and I, face to face in the crowd. I'm sorry. There doesn't seem to be very much that one can do about this. No. No, it's quite all right. Is uh, anything the matter? Oh, I know. I, I, I've just lost my friends, and there's not much chance of finding them. Well, shall I get you out of this? Yes, please. There. This is better, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Do you, uh, think you'll get home all right? Well, I... Yes, yes, I'm quite sure. I, I mean, I... Well, I don't think I'll go home just yet. Well, would you care to have a drink with me? See the New Year in together? I'd like to very much. Thanks. I'm alone, too. Uh... D- yes? I'm sorry. Uh, haven't we met before? Have we met before? <laughs> It does sound rather trite, doesn't it? But I didn't mean it as an opening. Well, uh, shall we go? Go right in. We can have another drink and I... No, thank you. It's getting rather late. Oh, you can sit down for a moment. Please. You don't have to leave now, do you? Tell me, is this some friend's apartment? Why, no, it's mine. But this isn't where you live. Yes? What made you say that? Well, I never saw a place so completely without the feminine touch. Oh, well, this happens to be the place where I live. The other place is where I sleep, you know, breakfast and get my mail. Oh, I see. May I use your phone? Of course, there it is. Thank you. You want me to go somewhere while you talk? Oh, no. I warn you, I may listen. Uh, Well, you can hear what I have to say. (sighs) Hello. Hello, darling. Oh, hello, Mother. Just wanted to wish you a Happy New Year again. Happy New Year to you, too, Mother. Thanks, darling. Say, did anything happen tonight? Mm, What? Well, you know, did he say he wanted to marry you? (laughs) Oh, no, dear. Oh, gosh. Well, are you coming home soon? Yes, very soon, I think. Good night, darling. (sighs) Sounded very intimate. Was it a man? You'd like to know? Yes, I think I'd like to know everything about you. Who are you? Where do you live? What do you do? Oh, I... I'm someone you met tonight in the crowd. Someone to whom I'll be eternally grateful. Why? Well, you see, I was lost tonight, too. Not really lost. I went out for a walk about 10 o'clock. I was pretty lonely until we bumped into each other. You're married, aren't you? Yes. Don't you usually celebrate New Year's Eve with your wife? Oh, I'm sorry. That was the wrong thing to say. Forgive me. Oh, it's quite all right. I'm afraid it's not a great secret anyway. All married people aren't happy together, you know. Tell me, are you... Are you unhappy? Yes. (laughs) I've never told that to anyone before. Funny, I should tell you. A perfect stranger. Are you? Somehow I feel that you're not. A stranger is someone you can't talk to, except about the weather or the market. But I can talk to you. May I see you again? Please? Well, isn't life complicated enough? We have to tangle ourselves up willingly with our eyes open. I don't understand you. Why can't I see you? Because I... Oh, I don't know. I I just think we'd better not. I'm sorry. 
You speak as though you'd been greatly disappointed once. I was. Well, I'll have to go now. Good night. Good night. Well? That picture on the table there. Oh, my company. Or what was left of them. It was taken just after the armistice. And this is you, isn't it? Yes, not looking very well. I just come from the hospital. You were wounded? Yes, a head injury. Not too serious, but it uh, kind of fogged me up a little. I uh, used to forget things. Forget? Yes, names, faces. They had to tell me who I was in the hospital. Then I pieced a lot of it together for myself. I never mentioned it to my people. I asked them to send me pictures from home. You know, snapshots of themselves, the house, my friends. They never suspected. And then, gradually, things began to come back to me. But not everything. There are still some blanks, empty pieces in my life that I'll probably never know about. Go on. Well, that's all. But that's why, when I meet people sometimes, I have a strange feeling of having known them before, of something happening long ago that I can almost remember. And if they are people you've known, and if they tell you things, things that have happened, things that are true, do you remember then? Does it come back to you? No, not always. Sometimes I just have to take their word for it. Oh, you take their word. Life has been very complicated for you, too. Hasn't been easy for you, has it? I wasn't looking for sympathy. No, I know. I'm glad you told me. I'm so very glad. Yes, David. Where have you been? Why, I thought you'd never get home. We hunted all over for you. Oh, I, I'm sorry, David. I've been walking. In all this snow? Yes, I... I had to think. Well, Mary, what's the matter? You, you look so strange. David. Yes? David, I'm sorry. I can never marry you. Is that what you were... you were thinking about? Yes, that and other things. It wouldn't be fair to you, David. I like you too much. And well, you see, I I'm still in love with someone else. So I didn't marry David. I couldn't. And I told him the truth. That's why I'm writing this letter to you, Jim, my darling. I've been so sick, so very tired, and I had to write the words I couldn't speak. I love you, Jim. I love you now as I've loved you always. And I have a feeling that we can be happy again somewhere. When you receive this letter, I shall be gone. But your son will be here. Please come and see him. And if there's a place from which I can watch, I'll be there. And I'll be happy. Goodbye, Goodbye my, my darling. darling. Goodbye, Goodbye, my sweet. Now I can call you mine again. Yours, Mary. Jim! Jim, let me in! Jim! Come in, Blanche. Jim, I thought you'd never open the door. Park said you'd locked yourself in. I, I was afraid. I was afraid. No, not now. It's all changed now. I've got something to live for. You mean you've heard from the office? Is everything all right then? No, it's just the same down there. But something's happened. I... I... Can't explain it, Blanche. Something has happened to me too, Jim. I think I ought to tell you that I've taken you at your word. I've already told Norman that I'm going to marry him. Yes, I think that would be best. Is that all you have to say? That's all I can say now. 
There's some place I've got to go. Someone I've got to see. I thought I married Miss Moore to use that. Blanche, let's not pretend any longer. We've known for a long time what was happening, both of us. Try to be happy. I'm going to try, too. <laughs> You were Mary's aunt. Yes. There's not much more I can tell you, Mr. Emerson. This morning, she gave me the letter to send to you after she was gone. I sent it this afternoon. But why didn't she tell me before? She was afraid you wouldn't remember. That night I met her. I tried to remember then and couldn't. But there was something... Something inside of me that never forgot, never could forget. Uh, may I see my son now? Come in, Jimmy. Yes, Aunt Julia. Jimmy, darling, this man is... He has something to say to you. Thank you. Uh, I'm here, son. We, uh, we've got a lot to weather, haven't we? Yes, sir. But, uh, we'll do it, won't we? I mean, the two of us together. I don't know who you are. You will, son. We're going to know each other very well, if you let me. You see, uh, I'm your father, son. feeling that we can be happy again somewhere. And if there's a place from which I can watch, I'll be there. And I'll be happy. Before our stars return for their curtain calls, let me tell you what happened in Nancy's kitchen one day. Her sister has just dropped in. Gosh, it's good to see you, sis. But you would catch me doing dishes. Oh, Pooh, we all have to do them. Say, did you hear that Mrs... Why, Nan, whatever has happened to your hand? Oh, you mean these lobster claws of mine? I can't help it. Doing dishes three times a day. Honey, I'll bet it's that wash day soap you're using. Now look at my hands. Oh, they do look nice, but do you know why? I use Lux for my dishwashing. But... But what? But, Mary, I'm pinching pennies these days. So am I. But Lux is terribly thrifty. Listen, let's make a test. You keep track of how long your strong soap lasts, and I'll keep track of how long the same amount of Lux lasts. And so the girls did just that. And here they are reporting. Hello, sis. Just wanted to report I've used up all my dishwashing soap. How's your Lux? Oh, goodness, I've still got a lot of Lux left. See, that's what I mean, sis. Lux flakes go so much further, they're really thrifty. If Mary knew about our laboratory tests, she'd see how right she is about Lux being thrifty for dishes. Ounce for ounce, Lux does up to twice as many dishes as other well-known soaps. It's much richer, makes more suds. And, of course, you'll be happy when you see how soft and smooth Lux leaves your hands. Try Lux flakes for your dishes tomorrow. Now, back to Edward G. Robinson and our stars. Our thanks to Ida Lupino and Robert Young for taking us back to only yesterday, a period which in real life contains many pleasant memories as well as tragic ones. Eddie, what were you doing at the time of only yesterday? 1929? Uh, well, I was on my way to California, bumping across the desert in the Model T Ford. You hadn't been fooling with the uh, stock market, Eddie. No, 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 I'd been serious. The market isn't fooling. The oh. whole... Uh, show business was on the skids in New York, and I had a bid to make my first talking picture here in Hollywood. How about you in 1929, Ida? Well, I was still in England, climbing out of school windows and running away every chance I had, <laughs> determined to become an actress. Yes, and uh, pretty young, I guess. <laughs> well, it was several years before I got my first real part <laughs> in an English picture with John Loder. Well, I can tell you about Bob Young. I hadn't been in Hollywood many weeks before they were urging me to see a promising juvenile actor at the Pasadena Playhouse. 
Well, that's only part of the story, Eddie. I was acting at night, but to make both ends meet, I was everything from soda jerker to a bank clerk in the daytime. <laughs> well, when you go back 15 years or so, you certainly learn unusual things about your friends. Well, Ida, you don't have to go back 15 years to learn extraordinary things about your friends. Uh, I wonder how many people know that Bob Young is an expert cattle raiser. And an expert, too, at growing citrus fruit trees. Or that Ida Lupino has had her own musical compositions played by the Los Angeles Symphony. Or that Eddie Robinson has one of the finest collections of paintings in the country. Eddie, I hear you built a new gallery for your paintings. Yes, I built a new house for them over the badminton court. Why over the badminton court? Uh, so my wife couldn't make me exercise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we've covered the past and the present pretty well. But now about the future, Eddie. What are you having on Lux next Monday night? Well, for next Monday night, we have one of the great stage and screen successes of our time. Robert Sherwood's thrilling drama, The Petrified Forest, starring Ronald Coleman and Susan Hayward. Packed with action and suspense, it's the story of a disillusioned wanderer, a girl he meets in the exciting background of the Arizona desert, and a tight-lipped killer who brings them both together in a strange and moving love. Congratulations, Eddie. It's a great play. And good night. Good night. Good night, and many, many thanks. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman and Susan Hayward in the Petrified Forest. This is Edward G. Robinson saying good night from Hollywood. Housewives, get those extra red points for your family at the same time that you speed America to victory. Your grocer is ready to give you two red ration points with four cents for each pound of waste fats that you bring in. Waste fats and greases from your kitchen are desperately needed for our military effort now. Save every drop you can. Only Yesterday was presented through the courtesy of Universal Picture Company, producers of Walter Wanger's Salome, Where She Danced. Edward G. Robinson is currently appearing in the international picture, Woman in the Window. Heard in tonight's play were Lois Corbett as Aunt Julia, Tommy Cook as Jimmy, Lorene Tuttle as Blanche, and Charles Seal, Howard McNear, Norman Field, Eddie Marr, Ferdinand Mounier, Regina Wallace, Janet Scott, and Fruta Marson. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear The Petrified Forest, starring Ronald Coleman and Susan Hayward. It's spry for cake, spry for pie, spry for all you bake and fry. When your butcher says no meat, serve tasty, delicate fish fried to tender, golden perfection in pure, all-vegetable spry. Delicious? Right. And remember, foods fried the spry way are digestible. For better meals, in spite of shortages, depend on new Easy Mix Spry, S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Petrified Forest with Ronald Coleman and Susan Hayward. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.